Hi, I'm Tom and in this video I will go through main features that Revit LT is missing compared to the full version of Revit. I am Revit LT user, I use it for interior design. That's why this video won't include just a list of missing features. I will also explain my experience with working without or working around those missing features. I'm creating this video to help other people understand the limitations of Revit LT. When I was considering moving to Revit LT, I found the comparison table between versions on Autodesk site. This table will be linked in the description box below. But I wasn't sure with some of the features how I would miss them. So I will also tell you how much each of the missing features affects my practice. I will rate those features from A to C depending on how useful it would be for me. A meaning that I would love to have that feature, B meaning that I somewhat missed the feature and C meaning that I don't care for it. So first things first, what is Revit LT and why would you want to use it? Revit LT is building information modeling software. It's a scaled down version of Autodesk's Revit software but it's missing some of the features. It is meant for architects and designers and it enables BIM workflow. The main advantage of LT version compared to the full version is its pricing. It costs less than one fifth of the price of the full version. So that's quite a compelling reason to consider it. Let's take a look at the first group of features that is missing from Revit LT collaboration features. LT is not meant to be used in large teams to coordinate on centrally located model file. This model file is usually placed on server and LT users cannot edit this centrally located file, although they can open it. This group of missing features also includes interference check, work sharing and sharing coordinates among projects. Since I work in a small design studio where only one person works on certain projects, I don't care much for these features. I give it grade C in my ranking of how much I miss the feature, so that means I don't care much for it. Next missing feature is no add-ins in LT version. Add-ins are third-party enhancements of the core software, which enable extensive functionality added to Revit. There are lots and lots of useful add-ins which can help you, for instance, with importing and exporting Excel files, creating hatch patterns, creating custom furniture or kitchen cabinetry, better landscaping workflow, and so on. Add-ins are needed to connect Revit to external rendering or real-time rendering software such as Enscape. Some manufacturers create their own add-ins which then enable you to seamlessly place their products in Revit. Even some basic functionality, like copying non-empty sheets, was achievable only through add-ins until recent version 2022. In my opinion, not having add-ins is the most limiting factor of Revit LT and I miss it a lot. I give it grade A in my ranking. We can also include Dynamo, a graphical programming language, in this group. Dynamo scripts enable user to easily create small programs which are tailored to individual use cases. I would give grade B to Dynamo in my ranking. Third big group that is missing in Revit LT is MEP and structural functionality. LT is not meant for HVAC, electrical or structural engineers. The functionality is not included. Don't take me wrong, you can place lights, switches, plumbing fixtures and structural components, but only in limited fashion and without calculations and studies. For example, you can place individual trusses, but you cannot create truss system. You can place toilets, but you cannot model piping. As a designer, I'm not limited by this, this at all, so I give it ranking C. What is also limited in Revit LT are the import and export options, but not too severely. You can link or import DWG files, raster images, DGN, IFC or SketchUp files, so that's quite, quite okay. 
I was pleasantly surprised that in version 2022 Autodesk enabled importing of OBJ and STL file format. You can export to DWG, FBX or IFC file format. But you are limited in exporting or importing to some or from some more obscure formats like SAT, ADSK, GBXML, ODBC or Rhino files. What might prove problematic is that you cannot customize the visibility of linked Revit native RVT files. The most frustrating is the limitation of importing or linking PDF files. You cannot do that in Revit LT. If you have PDF, you have to transform it to PNG raster image and then import it to Revit LT. If it wasn't for this PDF glitch, I would give this group of missing features ranking C, but because of it, I give it ranking B. Now let's take a look at some modeling limitation. First of them is not being able to create in-place families. This means that you cannot create families, for example cabinets, kitchen countertops or other equipment. You cannot create these directly in your project. You have to model them as an independent family. At first, I was worried I would miss this feature because we create lots of custom furniture, which sounds ideal for in-place modeling. But in my practice, I don't miss it that much. When I need to create custom piece of furniture or casework, I just measure the space in my project and create corresponding reference planes in new family and then I can easily model the custom piece in family editor. I would rate this feature between B and C. I mostly don't miss it. Other modeling limitations are missing shaped edited floors and roofs. This can sometimes be useful but not a big limitation. You don't have to worry that you won't be able to create a bit more complicated roof or floor shapes. Not having parts, I don't miss much neither. It enables you to separate one wall or floor to different parts, which can then be worked on independently. From what I know, the behavior of parts is quite quirky and it is not used extensively even by full Revit users. What I miss quite a lot is assembly functionality. This enables you to join several objects, or it can be just one object, into assembly, which then behaves like one object. I would like, love to have this feature to use it on our custom-made closets. You can easily create elevation, plan or section views of such assembly. This would be ideal for our case. So overall, I give ranking B to this group of missing features. Conceptual massing is also missing from Revit LT. The basic Revit modeling is quite simple. Its basics is solid modeling, where you can create boxes, revolves, sweeps, voids, and combination of these, but not freeform modeling. This limits you in more unusual organic modern designs like those from Zaha Hadid or Gary Architects. In my case, this includes some modern interior furniture or casework designs with fluid shapes. You cannot really model these in Revit LT. Adaptive components are also missing from Revit LT. These enable you to make massing smart, so it reacts to movement of shape handles. You cannot create these and also if a family is created with adaptive components, you won't be able to load it into Revit LT. But luckily, not many families are created this way. To have an idea what these features can create, I mean adaptive components and conceptual massing, you can check out Autodesk's pilot project of reconstruction of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. This BIM model was created in Revit and Autodesk stressed that they took heavy use of adaptive components. You can see all the arches, columns and intricate details. This model is publicly available, uh, available to view and I will link it in the description box below. This building would be hard or 
impossible to model in Revit LT. I rate this group of missing features as B or almost A. It would be really nice to have it, but one can live without it. Now from presentation functionality, internal rendering engine is missing. The only way you can create renders is by using Autodesk Cloud Rendering. That sounds nice, but it's not very practical option in real use. If you know something about rendering, you know that to get a good result, you do a lot of test renderings and then adjust things and then re-render again. And this repeats several times because uploading projects to Autodesk Rendering Cloud takes some time it is not as flexible as when you just hit the render button in your software. You also have to pay to get better quality and resolution renders. You only get small images in medium quality for free. I would rate this missing internal rendering engine as B for me. Last but not least are missing view filters. These enable you to better set up views, change object view behavior based on filtering options. In Revit LT you only have view templates, which are great, but sometimes I miss the better granularity of view filter setup. I rate this missing feature also as B. So these are the main groups of features that Revit LT is stripped of compared to full Revit. I think Revit LT is a good tool for creating architectural and design documents and other BIM output, schedules, takeoffs, etc. I create interior design documentation with it quite successfully. Sometimes I get frustrated with missing feature because I cannot do what I could do with full version or I have to resort to tedious workarounds but paying five times more for full version just wouldn't be worth it for me. I hope this video was informative and helped you in your purchasing decision. Let me know in comments below what you think about Revit LT. Is it worth the money or is it too axed? Have a good day.